Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing all right. My wife is better. She still has allergies. Anybody here fighting allergies? Oh. Everybody got CD clips, I hope? Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, we come today to the question of Jesus in Matthew 6, uh, why do you worry? Why do you worry? And we're going to start in verse 19 of Matthew 6. Uh, worry is a hard thing. Uh, you want to get rid of it, but sometimes it's hard to get rid of, isn't it? Carl Hurley, the comedian, uh, tells a story about trying to throw a trash can away. And so it was an old beat-up can, and he put it out with the trash and the other cans, and uh, sure enough, the next morning, there it was, stacked neatly with the cans. So the next week, he turned it upside down so that he could see all the holes in the bottom. And uh, when, he came, when he came home the next day, it was turned upright with the other cans. And so he took a sledgehammer, and he beat it, and beat it, and beat it, and put it out, and not only was it stacked with the other cans, but the trash man had tried to straighten it for a <laughs> And so he did the only thing he could do. He went to the hardware store and bought a chain and a lock and tied it to a tree in his front yard, and sure enough, in a couple of days, somebody had stolen it. <laughs> Very sort of like that. It's, uh, it's something you want to get rid of, but it might be hard to do. And... Uh, Sometimes for like the patient in the mental hospital who was standing with his with his ear close to the close to the wall, and the nurse came in and asked him if he was okay, and he said shh. And he kept listening, and so in a minute he motioned her over there, and uh, she put her ear to the wall and listened a minute, and she said, "I don't hear anything." And he said, "It's been like that all day." <laughs> Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. 
But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moss nor rust, rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a, add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would deal with our anxious hearts and draw us, Lord, into the world as you see it, as you created it. Draw us, Lord, into your rationale for peace that is here in these verses and into your commands that help us, Lord, to live a life without anxiety. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Be seated. I want us to look at three presuppositions for peace, and then three rationale for peace, and finally three commands for peace, and I think they're all important to having peace, for not worrying, not being anxious. Uh, I'm convinced that we live our lives based on assumptions or presuppositions. And I think one of the most difficult discipleship matters in life is changing my presuppositions to line up with those of the Word of God. Because the, the scriptures are written with a, a definite point of view about the world and assumptions about how it works and about how life works. And we are all raised in different ways and different assumptions or presuppositions come from our family of origin and the trauma in our life and our life experiences. And sometimes those presuppositions weigh against us really being able to do what Jesus calls us to do and be what Jesus calls us to do, to be. And so I, I, I'm fascinated by the study of the presuppositions that the word of God has when it says something. But Jesus points three of these out in the beginning of this passage. And the first one is that your treasures are in heaven. Your treasures are in heaven. If you're not going to worry, you have to have this point of view about life, this world view, that storing up stuff here where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal isn't really a way to find security and worry-free living because everything in this world is temporary. Everything this world offers is temporary. Jesus will say a few chapters later here in Matthew 10, 28, not to be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather, rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. If your life is all about show, and all about stuff, then you won't be able to live a worry-free life as the Lord calls us to live. 
And none of us is there, I understand, but building this presupposition into your heart that my treasures are in heaven. And Jesus makes that very clear. Lay up for your seed. He doesn't say not to lay up treasures, but he says lay up treasure in heaven where moth and rust can't corrupt and thieves don't break through and steal. No one can take it away. And if you lay up treasure in heaven and if that is the point of your life, the goal of your life, and, and the worldview of your life, then you can live a much more worry-free. If you understand that all of this belongs to the Lord anyway, and I don't own it, I just get to use it for a while. I'm only a steward of it, whatever God has given me. And you, you won't worry nearly as much. So your treasures are in heaven is the first presupposition. The second one, in verse 22 and 23, you see things as they really are. Jesus talks about the eye uh, seeing. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if you don't see the world the way God created us and intended us to see the world, it corrupts everything. How do we see things? How do we see life? How do we see our days? How do we see our breath? If everything is truly a gift of God, as the Bible says, and doesn't belong to us, even our life, the Bible says, doesn't belong to us. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. Therefore, we're going to glorify God in our body. That's why we're here. But if you don't see life that way, if you see life as somehow using others to get ahead or using others for your own pleasure or your own advancement, uh, it corrupts everything about life. So how do you see stuff, and then how do you see the world? How do you see life? You have to see things as they really are. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 25, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. We all have too many pairs of shoes. <laughs> I don't even have to ask. <laughs> I don't even have to look in your closet. Um, and I like having the right shoe for the right thing. But do you know that on this globe, over a billion people who live on the globe don't have adequate shoes? And at least 600 million don't have even one pair of shoes. And sometimes we're so troubled about having the right pair of shoes. I mean, I'm guilty of this. We worry about things and we accumulate things that really don't matter. I'm assuming everybody has on a pair of shoes. <laughs> and yeah. didn't come barefoot. <laughs> We have lots of shoes. And a lot of people in the world don't have any shoes. And we worry about things that are going to burn up one day. They're going to rot. They're going to be destroyed. And shoes is just one example of that. How do we see <coughs> life? Do we see things as they really are? And then the third presupposition is what do you serve? Jesus said in verse 24, no one can serve two masters. He'll either be devoted to one or despise the other or love the one and not care for the other. You can't serve God in money. So what do you see your life as doing? What is your life accumulating here? What is important to you? So those three presuppositions, your treasures are in heaven, you see things as they really are, and you serve God, and not money. And then there are three rationales for peace, uh, beginning in verse 25. Your life is more than food and clothes. Jesus said in verse 25, 
I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? It is. Life is a lot more than just the stuff we have. Life is much more than the material things we have. And so Jesus says we worry about all of the material things when life is about much more than that and much other than that. And so if you want to have peace, you need to listen to his rationale here. Your life is much more important and, and much better than just stuff. And we in America have lots of stuff. Um, I'm not even going to go there. But we, have, <laughs> we have lots of stuff. We're living in an old house built by Diane's great-grandfather. And so we have four generations of stuff that we're still going through. Have y'all gone through generations of stuff? And, you know, we keep things we think our children are going to want. They're going to back a dump truck up. <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. Stuff. And stuff becomes this, this weight we bear. When you get enough of it, you can't get out from under it. You can't get through it. And then you've got to emotionally detach from it. Wilma Reed is a wonderful Christian lady in Cleburne. And she had lived in this beautiful two-story house and had collected many treasures from missionaries around the world. She had stuff, if you're a Baptist, from Lottie Moon and um, uh, Annie Armstrong, Mary Hill Davis. She had stuff in her house from all over the place in this huge two-story house. And she had a little rent house next to her house. And so she decided at one point in her life, when she was about 85 or 6, she said, I'm going to sell this big house and move into my little rent house. But she had all this stuff, and so she had an estate sale. And I went to her estate sale, and she was there. And I said, it must be hard to try to, you know, get rid of all these things that are so important. I mean, this is what she said. I've loved these things for a long time, and they've never loved me back. <laughs> it's time for someone else to love. And I thought, God, help me <laughs> to see my stuff that way. It's never loved me back. It's time to give it, get rid of it, let somebody else have it. Life is more than stuff. The second rationale, Jesus says, is you've got to realize that you are extremely valuable to God. In verse 26, he says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Well, aren't you? And God takes care of them. Can't you trust him to take care of you? So Jesus' rationale is that you're extremely valuable to God. He cares about you. The Bible says he sings over us. Whatever that means, it's a beautiful picture of the love of God for us. And people have used that and, and gone to extreme metaphorical distances to talk about how God loves us and cares for us. But sometimes life beats us up and experiences tear us up and we think somehow that we are not valuable. We get to thinking that we are so broken that surely nobody can love us and certainly not God. But Jesus said, so much more valuable than the birds of the air and God takes care of them. Now many of us help. I don't know if you feed the birds. We try to feed <coughs> the birds, especially here in the spring. And uh, these Carolina wrens have come through. I don't know if you know about Carolina wrens, but
but they they go in packs. Yeah. And two or three get on my sunflower feeder and they throw all the seed out to the guys on the ground who are eating. I watched them one day, about 25 birds on the ground and three or four designated guys up at the feeder and they're just chunking the sunflower seed out to their friends down on the ground. And then someone's watching so our cats don't get them. But it's just fascinating to see the birds and to think, I'll take care of them. You're much more valuable than that. God loves you. He cares for you. No matter what's happened to you, no matter what life has done to beat you up, no matter what depths you've sunk to, God values you. He loves you. He cares for you. And He's going to take care of you if you'll trust Him. He'll feed you. you will clothe you. He'll take care of your needs. And then thirdly, third rationale in verse 27, your hours in your life are in God's hands. Look at this verse. And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? None of us. I heard somebody say one time, if you eat right and exercise and really take care of yourself, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> and, I mean, I want to live well till I die, but I'm trying to hedge myself so I don't spend those last 10 years as a vegetable in a nursing home somewhere. Because as a pastor, I've seen lots of people who spend all their life working to live longer, and then they have this health thing that puts them in a nursing home. One dear lady I knew kept asking me, I don't know why God's leaving me here. And she had such deterioration of her muscles, she couldn't even scratch her nose. And I told her, God's left you here to pray. Because prayer is something that we need and that you can do. And uh, but, but she was... And, I, you know, I want to live. And I know none of us gets to... But um, don't worry about your life. Live life. And I'm not telling you to go get as fat as I am or anything. I'm just saying, don't spend all your time worrying, trying to add days to your life. Jesus makes it clear. Worry cannot add a single day to your life or a single hour to your life. So trust God that your hours and your life are in His hands. The God who holds the whole world in His hands also holds me and He also holds you. Live as people who trust God's providence every day, every hour. And don't worry about things. Don't worry about your lifespan. I mean, we all want to live as long as we can, as well as we can. But the truth is, for a believer, when you leave this life, you start your best life. This is just the preface to the book that goes for eternity that is your best life there. I don't believe God ever wants us to end our own life by any means. But we have this great hope in the Lord Jesus and, and confidence because of the word of God that when this, this life is over, we start our best life. I say of my dad who died in 2011, he's having his best day ever. There's no night there, so it's still one day. <laughs> I don't understand all those mysteries, but he's not in time anymore. He's, he's in eternity. He's with the Lord. He's having his best day ever. I don't have to worry about him. And I haven't really lost him because I know where he is. And one day I'll get to see him again. But Jesus has this wonderful ability when we trust in him and commit our life to him to set us free 
from the cares that weigh us down about life and about ourselves and, uh, and about stuff. Trust Him. Your hours in your life are in God's hand. You're extremely valuable to God. Life is more than food and clothes. So three rationale for peace. And then these three commands at the end of this passage for peace. And the first command is three times repeated, don't be anxious or don't worry. He says in verse 25, do not be anxious about your life. He says in verse 28, why are you anxious about clothes? And then he says in verse 31, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows what you need. So stop literally uses a Greek form that means stop worrying. Stop worrying. It's easy to say, it's hard to do. Kind of like getting rid of an old trash can. <laughs> Just kind of hangs around with us. But stop worrying, Jesus says, three times. The Bible tells us when he went to visit Lazarus in Bethany, and Mary and Martha were there, that Martha was busying herself about getting everything ready. And I'm thankful for the Marthas of the world, but the story is funny anyway. Martha's trying to get everything ready, and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet listening to him, and Martha says, Lord, tell my sister to get up and help me. And Jesus tells her, no. You're worried about a whole lot of things, but Mary's chosen the best thing, to sit at my feet and, and listen to me and to know me. Don't worry. Stop worrying. And then secondly, trust your father. Trust your father. Don't be like the pagans. The pagans worry about all this stuff. That's not how we are to live as people of God. People who know the Lord have this wonderful freedom of trusting our father who knows everything I need before I ever ask him. You know, when I became a father, I understood this better because I want to provide for my kids. I don't want my kids to be needy. And I would do whatever I have to do to try to provide whatever my kids want. And I'm just a sinful guy. Think about the God of the universe who loved us so much he gave his only son to die in our place and for our sin. And how much he loves us that he is giving us everything we need. So today, I can celebrate this truth from the Word of God. I have everything I need. Now, do I have everything I want? No. I don't think I'll ever get there because my wants are out of line. But I can trust God that I, He's given me everything I need. Hallelujah. And if I needed something else, God would give it to me. Now, I pray about things. I mean, when Diane was sick, I prayed she'd get well. I wanted her to get well. We pray for people who are sick, but we also realize that sometimes God does wonderful works of grace and beauty through sickness, through suffering, through pain. And it's not the way we like that to happen. But the Lord gives us grace in the midst of that to glorify Him, to praise Him, and, and to bring Him honor. So I've got to trust that today God has met all of my needs and thank Him for that. He takes care. So don't worry, trust your Father. And then this final command, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 26, 
What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Well, gaining the whole world and losing your soul means you lose for eternity. It's not worth anything then to have all the stuff in the world, all the money, all the influence, all the, the power, and lose your own soul. So we have this priority that Jesus gives us to seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. To put that above all other things. To set that as my goal every day. Lord, may, may your rule be extended. May, may your kingdom, may your righteousness be extended in my life and in the world. Seek that first, and all these other things will be added to you. So I recommend to you these three presuppositions for peace and the three rationale of the three commands. And I believe God wants us to live without anxiety. Let's bow together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, and your Holy Spirit helps us to receive it and understand it and apply it to our life. Pray, God, today that you would help us to be set free from the anxiety that binds us and that is always grabbing at us. And set us free, Lord, to relax in your love for us, in your value that you've put on us. Help us, Lord, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Lord, whatever you need to do in us today to help us in that, I pray you do it. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, amen. amen.